Okay. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Ben Washington. Uh, thank you for joining us in our Bible study for this evening. And uh, just to give a, a recap, we have uh, finished uh, the book of Romans, and now we're in a new book tonight. We're in the gospel according to St. Luke. Uh, so we're starting with chapter one. But uh, let me open up with a word of prayer. And then we'll, we'll kind of give some overview of, of the book. Father God, thank you for allowing us to gather tonight to be able to continue uh, searching the scriptures through uh, growing in our faith. We pray, oh God, that you will bless our hour of study, that our minds uh, might be open to your word. May we, may we be renewed, Father, in our minds by your word, guided by your Holy Spirit. So uh, bless the teaching. Uh, bless our, our, our ears to hear and our eyes to see and may the word fall on good ground and produce a mighty harvest for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank all, uh, all of you for tuning in tonight and hopefully we will get more to join in. Uh, tonight we are in the gospel according to St. Luke. Uh, this is the first of uh, four gospels that we hope to be able to cover. Uh, the study in the upcoming months and 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 year uh, after we get through with the book of Luke, we're going to cover the second book that was written by Luke, which most people don't know, is the book of Acts. Uh, Luke was a doctor. Uh, he was a Gentile. Uh, the, he is the only non-Jewish person to write a book in the New Testament. Isn't that amazing? He's the only non-Jewish person to write a book. Uh, when, you, when you read the book of Luke, you'll discover that Luke gives a very detailed account of what took place uh, as it pertains to uh, the, the early formation of our Christian faith. Uh, because as a doctor, he, he, was, he was studious and he gave good notes. Uh, as a Greek, he understood uh, he understood the Greek language, and he wrote in what some have referred to as classical Greek. Uh, and, and there have been people who have been persuaded to become Christians or believers of, of Jesus because they read the book of Luke. Now, when you read the four Gospels, uh, each writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they have a different angle or a different aspect of the gospel that they are trying to convey. Matthew uh, writes the gospel trying to convey that Jesus is the anointed one, he's the Christ. And he, he oftentimes will quote uh, Old Testament scriptures. Uh, it is written, it is written, it is written. And he is primarily focused on a Jewish audience. Uh, when you read the, uh, the gospel according to Mark, Mark focuses on the gospel. Uh, his audience is the Romans, uh, which was the uh, the leader of the ancient empire at, at that day and time. And so he he looks at Christ as the suffering savior. Then you come with Luke, and Luke looks at him as the son of man. And then John, uh, the apostle John in the gospel according to John, he looks at uh, Christ from the angle of the son of God. But when you get all four pictures of Jesus, the anointed one, according to the Old Testament, uh, uh, the suffering servant, uh, the son of man, the son of God, it gives you a pretty overall perspective of, of Jesus. Now, you need to know that the Gospels were not written. Um, they were not written right after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. In fact, some years had actually passed. The first of the four Gospels that is believed to have been written is, is, uh, is St. Mark. Uh, so as you read the Gospels, you need to know and that the Gospels have a different audience, a different perspective. They weren't written immediately uh, during, the, during the time of Christ on earth or even immediately after his ascension, they were written some years later. Uh, what you need to know about Luke, who is a Gentile, who is the writer 
of the gospel according to uh, Luke. Uh, not only was he a doctor, but he was pretty much a uh, historian. Now, when, when I asked this question, uh, who wrote the most verses in the New Testament? What, uh, whose name would come to mind? You can you can unmute yourself so I can hear you now, okay? Paul. When you look, uh, yeah, most people would say Paul, but you take all of the books that are, are the letters that Paul wrote, and you take what Luke wrote, which is Luke and Acts. Luke actually wrote more verses in the New Testament than Paul did. Okay. Two, okay. Uh, as a matter of fact. I was telling Sam Jones today that <laughs> there are 80 verses in chapter one in Luke. Yeah. So when so when you look at uh, you look at at uh, Acts and you look at Luke and you take all those verses, uh, most of the verses in the New Testament was actually written by Luke. Now, what's interesting about Luke and the book of Acts, he's writing to one person. And he's given a historical uh, perspective of one's faith in Christ. And so he starts, he starts the, uh, before the birth of Christ and he deals with uh, the arrival of John the Baptist. Okay. And he, and in the book of Acts, he talks about uh, the early church uh, after the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And so you need to know, uh, that Luke was very detailed. Uh, he understood uh, Greek very well, and and he wrote most of the New Testament when you consider the number of verses that are in the New Testament, okay? So let's look at uh, Luke chapter one. I hope to get to chapter one and two tonight, but that may be a, that may be a big stretch. And, and so... And I want to take you out through the Bible. So you you need to, if you're going to be students of the Bible, it's always good to be able to write some notes down and not just try to record it to memory, but to actually write it down. So I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see. All right. So, and I'm reading out the New King James Version. It says, in as much as many have taken to hand, in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the, from the very first, to write to you an orderly account. Now notice how he's talking about, um, uh, I'm gonna get eyewitnesses. I'm going uh, to uh, give a narrative of the things that have been fulfilled, uh, and I'm going to write it uh, in, a, in a way because I have perfect understanding of how things occur from the first uh, and, uh, and to set an orderly account. So he is very committed to helping people understand the Christian faith from the very beginning. And he says in verse 4, that you may know the certainty of those things which you were instructed. So imagine yourself as a new Christian, and all of us have been new Christians. Imagine that you want to know as much about your faith as possible, starting from the very beginning. And he's talking about it in the New Testament. Uh, the Gospel of Luke is, is very detailed, Vicki, and would be where, where, where one would want to start because he starts with the arrival of John the Baptist, okay? So let's take a look at uh, how things get started. So look at verse five. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain, piece, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was the daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and also the Lord blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. So he starts at the time of, uh, during, the, during the reign of King Herod, okay? And Herod was the one who uh, 
uh, help build the Jewish temple. And you need to know that uh, the temple we had sacrifices, and those who attend our noon Bible study uh, know that only the tribe of Levi had the responsibility of, of taking care of the sacrifices and the ordinances uh, as it pertains. So only the tribe of Levi. So we know that Zacharias had to be a Levi, okay? And we also know from reading here that his his wife was also a Levi because it says she was the daughter of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth, okay? And we, and we know the Bible says here in verse number six, they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and orders of the Lord, and they were blamed. So when you read the word blame, does it mean that they were out sin? Does that mean that they were without sin? They said they were blameless. They were righteous. No, that's not what it's actually meaning. But, in, uh, but their, life, their lifestyle was one in which they lived right and one in which they were uh, walking in, in a way that God wanted them to walk. Now, uh, because there were so many Levites, they took turns uh, serving in the temple. And one of the ways they took turns is, is that they would draw lots. OK, and so uh, in this particular instance, Zacharias drew a lot, which means, OK, I'm going to serve in the temple for a period of time. And so 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 while he was in the temple, uh, we're also told that they were both up in age. OK, they were they were elderly. Uh, and we're also told that Elizabeth was barren. What does that mean? She didn't have a, uh, she had no kids. OK, uh, and so she was an elderly lady who had no kids. Uh, she was married to uh, uh, Zechariah, uh, and he was a Levi, and he was now given the responsibility for a period of time to go serve in the temple because he had pulled a lot. Okay, now let's keep reading. So it was that while he was serving as priest of God in the order of division, according to the custom of the priesthood, uh, his lot fell to burn the incense, which when he went to the temple of the Lord. So if you know the Jewish temple outside the Holy of Holies, there was a, uh, there was a, a incense uh, and the incense gave a aroma uh, throughout the temple, but the incense actually symbolizes the prayer of believers. And we find that, uh, uh, we find that in the new Testament, when the Bible says that our prayers or like a sweet aroma or a sweet uh, incense. So uh, that tells us that God wants us to pray. Amen. Is there anybody in here that that uh, feel like you pray too much? Anybody feel like you pray too much? Not I'm going to ask this question. No. Does anybody feel like no. you, you don't pray enough? Right. Don't pray yeah. enough. Don't, right. don't pray enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't, and pray so, enough. don't pray enough. But you need to know God uh, our prayers to God is like a sweet aroma, okay? God God enjoys our prayers. So, so uh, Zacharias was responsible for uh, taking care of the, of the altar of incense, okay? Now it says here uh, in verse number 10, and the whole multitude of people were praying outside at the hour of incense, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So he was in the temple, okay? And only the priest would go, in the, go into the temple and offer sacrifices, okay? So they, it was a very private, very limited number of people in the, in the temple, okay? So this conversation that took place was a private conversation that uh, Luke is recording because he's getting this from eyewitnesses. He's getting it from people who know what took place around the time of John the Baptist, okay? So it says here uh, that standing around the altar, that was an angel. Now in verse 11, we don't get the angel's name, but later on in the book, we get who that angel was. And, and, and said when Zach Zachariah saw him, he was troubled. Can you imagine? He saw somebody in the temple that 
wasn't a Levi. He saw somebody in the temple that he wasn't expecting. He saw an angel. And the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers because you entertain angels unaware. Okay? And so the Bible says that uh, the, the angel said to him, don't be afraid, for your prayer is heard. Can you imagine he, he is responsible for uh, 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 attending to the altar of incense, which is the prayer of incense. And the angel tells him, don't be afraid. God's heard your prayer. Okay. He's heard your prayer. So uh, we learn from this verse here that uh, uh, Zacharias was a praying man. Okay. Now the Bible doesn't tell us in verse 11, what his prayer was, but we uh, verse 13, what his prayer was, but we find out very quickly because we're told here, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name what? John. John. So one of his prayers to God was, God, uh, I I want a child. And even, even though he was up in age, he still continued that prayer. Now, we don't know how long he waited how long he prayed that prayer, John. He may have prayed that prayer very early on after he got married, okay? Some people pray about something, and when it doesn't come right in the time that they expect it, they stop, uh, they right. stop praying for yeah. it. They stop asking for it, yeah. okay? Uh, but, but we learn here that there is an, an importance in being consistent in prayer. So the Bible tells us that Elizabeth is going to have a child. And the angel gets real specific and say, and you're to name him who? John. Okay, you're to give him John. John Taylor has a name, John. You, you're to name him John, okay? All right. Now we're told here, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Guess what? Not only are you going to be happy that the child is, is born, but a whole lot of other people are going to be happy. Why are they going to be happy? Because this child is destined to do great things. Okay. When you have a child that does great things, don't you have a sense of pride and joy that they've yeah. been able to accomplish? And imagine when you know that that child is doing great things on behalf of the Lord. Amen. Whether he's a missionary, whether he's a doctor, whether he's uh, a nurse, but he's doing ministry on behalf of the Lord. So, so the angel makes an announcement. Now we're told uh, we're told later on who this angel is. Yeah. But we're told in verse fifteen what some of the restrictions are that's going to be on this child. So look at verse number fifteen. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Okay? He couldn't hang out with the boys drinking. Okay? It's just me and the boys. Okay? He couldn't do that. All right? uh, and said he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. So even while he's inside the womb, during the time she's carrying him, the Bible says this child is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Boy, now isn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That even from birth, he's he's a spirit-filled child. Okay. Uh, it says in verse 16, and he we're, we're told in verse 16 what his purpose is, what his destiny is. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We know from the from other passages in the scripture, John was to be a forerunner of Christ. Amen. Okay. He was preparing men to re of the world to receive Christ. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, but I want you to take your uh, Bible and go to the book of Malachi, the last book in our in the Old Testament. Go to the book of Zechariah, Jennifer Robinson. Malachi. 
I'm doing that in, in a spirit of love, calling them out. Amen. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that Malachi, correct? Malachi. Okay. Malachi chapter four. And it only has six verses, okay? So look at Malachi chapter four, beginning with verse number five. It reads, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, okay? Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So the Jewish people, they were expecting uh, Elijah to come. Don't y'all remember when uh, Jesus asked his disciples, uh, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And some said that you are Elijah or one of the prophets, okay? Uh, even during John's ministry, they asked John, are you the Christ? Okay? Uh, and so... Uh, there was an expectation that the Messiah would come. Uh, but before he were to come, he was going to have someone who would prepare the way for him. And that was John the Baptist, who was going to come in the spirit of Elijah, who was going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. I like that passage of scripture because one of the things that is needed in our day and time it's for the, for the hearts of the father to turn back to that child or, or, or their kids. The fathers play an important role. We celebrated Mother's Day last Sunday. and the month of June, guess what? We're going to celebrate fathers because they play an important role too. I have to remind my kids, uh, uh, the reason why you celebrate mother is because of me. <laughs> okay, I, I like that. I'm gonna use that. I had a role That's in funny, that. Pastor. I, a role. I, I like that. I like. I'm just keeping it real. Okay, I'm keeping it real. Okay, now go back to Luke. Now we find out that uh, in verse number 18 that Zacharias has some doubt about what he heard. Now. Angels are in heaven. They minister on earth on behalf of God, and they minister to the uh, uh, to the to the saints, the believers. All right. But in verse eighteen, as Zechariah said to the angel, "How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years." He was saying in a very nice way, okay. "I'm old." And she old. She old. And she old. <laughs> I'm old. She old. Yeah. You know, I'm old. She old. <laughs> you know, and I'm not a young man anymore. Yeah. Sure She's is. not a young lady anymore. Okay. Uh, my sex drive is not like it used to be. <laughs> help, me, Lord. help me, help me, help me, help me, help me get in trouble now. Uh -oh. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <Rap. laughs> hey, I'm teaching a lesson. This got the way. Verse number 19. <laughs> and the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Now, angels carry out the will of God. He said, I stand in the presence of God. I, the reason why I'm here is because God sent me. God not only sent me, but he told me what to say. Right. Uh, and now you are doubting what I'm saying. Okay. He said, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you glad tidings. Now, verse number 20 gives a consequence for the doubt. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 20 gives a consequence for the doubt. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. So because you didn't believe, you're going to be unable to speak until a child is born. 
Wow. So can you imagine? I know there are some ladies who say, boy, I wish that could happen to me. My <laughs> husband's going to be quiet for nine months. <laughs> he ain't going to say a word. You, you know, uh, when I had laryngitis, when I couldn't speak for a whole month, you know, uh, uh, my wife told me to text her. And sometimes <laughs> when she would have a conversation that I didn't want to hear, I... Tell <laughs> <laughs> it on yourself, Pat. Huh? I'm, on yourself. I'm admitting. I'm admitting that. Okay, it was, it was. I had fun with it. Okay, no. So Gabriel appeared. Gabriel said what he had to say. Gabriel did what he had to do, and guess what? He went back to heaven. Okay, look at verse number twenty-one. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long until they said, now, what's taking him so long to carry out his function? Why won't he come out? So uh, it says the people waited. But when he came out, you know, one of the first questions they probably wanted to ask is, man, what you doing in there? But guess what? He couldn't speak. And so, but when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them, and he remained speechless. So it was as soon as the days of his service were completed that he departed to his own house. Okay? He can't speak, uh, Brother John, but he can make love to his wife. <laughs> yeah. so the Bible says in verse number 24, Oh, now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, mm -hmm. and she hid herself five months. You know, she was probably hoping that she would be able to carry this child to full birth, that she wouldn't lose the child. So she remained silent about it for five months, the Bible says. And then we're told, thus says the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he had looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. All right. So now we're talking about Luke is saying these things happened before the Messiah came. OK, the Christ came. Jesus came. So now let's let's turn the ch a chapter or a page on the next scene. So in verse number 26, it says now in the sixth month, that same age of Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now you have to remember it was in Nazareth that Jesus was raised. Right. Okay. So guess what? Before uh before Mary and Joseph uh had Jesus, uh they lived in Nazareth. Okay. And we're told that uh Gabriel was sent to a virgin who was betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and that the virgin's name was Mary. Now, it's believed that Mary was a teenager. And back then, they married early uh, because, number one, they, uh, life expectancy wasn't as long as yeah. it is today. So they married early, okay? Uh, and she was not, she was not wild. She was not, she was a virgin. She was, she had never been with a man, but she was engaged to marry a man by the name of Joseph. So the Bible says that this angel showed up to Mary in verse number 28. And the angel said, uh, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled. At, you know, what are you talking about? Highly favored of the Lord. And she said, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and shall bring forth a child, and you shall call his name what? Jesus. Jesus. Now notice the angel tells, that same angel told Gabriel, I mean, or told Zacharias, which you the name uh, the baby, which was John, and now he tells Mary, you're going to have a, a child, even though you're not pregnant, and you're not going to have sex before you have the child, but when you do have the child, you're going to name the child Jesus. The word Jesus is in, in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, and it really, uh, if you were translated in English, it means uh, Joshua, but guess what the word Jesus literally means? It means Savior. 
Okay. The word Jesus literally means savior or deliverer. Okay. Everybody got that? The name Jesus literally means savior or deliverer. Okay. Now take your Bible. Go to Isaiah chapter seven. Go to verse 14. Okay. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14. Mm. All right. Isaiah 7, verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself, and that's why I love when it says the Lord himself, that means God, it's a God thing. It's not a man thing. It's a God thing. It says the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel, which Emmanuel means God with us. Okay, so, so he not only is Savior, he's God with us. So for the 33 years that Jesus lived on the earth, he was God with us. Okay, right. the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Okay, the same was in the beginning of God. And the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of God. Amen. Okay. Now go back to Luke. So Mary is told in verse number 32, he will be great. He'll be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Now I could, I could spend a whole lesson on the fact that when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom, it's going to be a kingdom that will never end. When he comes back the second time, because he was rejected by his own the first time, when he comes back the second time is when he's going to set up his kingdom forever. Amen. Okay, he's going to set up his kingdom. For Jesus' first message when he preached was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Now, I'm here. It's here. Right. I'm the one. But guess what? They didn't receive him. Right. Okay? But when he comes back the second time, he's going to set up his kingdom on earth. Uh, he's going to fulfill the Old Testament scriptures. Uh God promised to David that he would have a son on the throne forever and ever. He's going to fulfill all those scriptures, the ones in the book of Daniel, the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah. He's going to fulfill all those scriptures, okay? Because God keeps his word. Can I say that again, Dr. Johnson? God keeps his word. He may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. He keeps his word, amen? So in God's time, Every prophecy about the Messiah is going to happen. It's going to come to pass, okay? Uh, there's no doubt, okay? Now, look at verse number 34. Now, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? Now, Zechariah said, how can this be because I'm old? Mary don't have that problem. You know, the problem she has is I ain't never had sex with a man. I'm engaged to, but I haven't. Okay, I'm engaged to, but I'm not. And the angel answered the question. That's Gabriel. The Holy Spirit will come unto you, and the power of the whole of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the one that is born will be called the Son of God. Verse 36. So she's she's being told, and, and this is called the Immaculate Conception. A woman who was never pregnant got pregnant, who never had sex, got pregnant. Now, now let me ask the question. The, the, the scripture in the book of Genesis asked this question. Is there anything too hard for God? No. no. 
If God can make a donkey talk, he can make a woman have a baby who never had sex. Amen. Amen. He can make a he can make a woman have a child who who uh, is up in age. Okay? Amen. So there's nothing too hard for God. I was I was telling Barbara Rockmore uh that she's becoming a scholar in the Bible and she and, and she's going to and she's going to be able to teach one day. You know what she's she laughed at me when I said that. <laughs> but then I had to remind Barbara and she told me her age. I'm not going to tell you what she told me, but I reminded her that um, Moses did not start his ministry until he was age 80. Oh, see? Abraham didn't have uh, his, his promised child until he was 100 years old. Sarah didn't have a child, the promised child, until she was 90. So there's nothing that's too hard for God. Y'all understand Amen. that, right? Amen. Okay. All right. So now y'all need to know, because I'm, I'm going to take my time right here. Mary was highly favored of God. But let me give you some things that I think our Catholic friends are wrong about. Number one, when they, they teach that Mary was without sin. They teach that the only two people who never sinned in the whole world was Jesus and Mary, his mother. And they refer to her as the Holy Virgin. Well, the Bible says very plainly in other gospels, the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus had brothers. Yeah. So guess what? After, after Jesus was born and Joseph married her, they got busy. Okay. She had children. Okay. So even right. though she was a virgin when she had Jesus, she, she didn't remain a virgin, okay? Right. And she was not without sin her whole life. She sinned. But guess what? God God uses people who have sinned. Amen. Yeah. yeah. God can use you. Have Amen. you ever sinned? Have you ever done wrong? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So God can use you. God can use a murderer. Oh. That murderer was Moses. That murderer was Paul. God can use a, a, a prostitute. That prostitute was Rahab. God can use a liar, that liar, that, that deceiver, that was that was Jacob. God can use whomever he wants to use. Amen. And and, and, and they don't they, they're not necessarily without sin. Okay, but they but their heart is turned to God. Okay. So let me keep reading. Now the Bible says in verse 36. Now uh, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age. She's now six months pregnant. Uh, but with God, nothing will be what? Impossible. All right. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Now, she was gracious. Lord, whatever you will it to be, let it be. Isn't that a wonderful spirit, Jesse? Yeah. Whatever you will it to be, let it be. Okay, the Bible says Gabriel left. He went back to God. Now, so let's look at when Mary and Joseph, uh, Mary and Elizabeth meet, okay? They're relatives, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Mary arose in those days and went to the high hill, the hill country with haste. That's not, uh, that's not Fredericksburg or Austin, okay? Entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb. Now, that babe in the womb is John the Baptist. Right. So, so Mary goes, to, goes to, to the house of Zacharias to meet her relative, Elizabeth. As soon as Mary announces that she's there, the Bible says the babe that is in Elizabeth uh, leaped for joy. Now, remember... Uh, that baby was filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb. Am I right? right. Yeah. Now get this. In the womb, John recognized the Messiah. Right. Guess what? When you when, when you are born again and you come to church, you are the leap of joy. Yeah. Why? Because, because okay. you're in the presence of God. That's so happy. That is heavy, heavy, heavy. Linda, 
when you're in the presence of God, you are to leap for joy. Amen. That's Hallelujah. what that's what the baby. Okay. Now uh, John the Baptist was six months. Now, can I tell y'all something? Because there's a lot of things going on today about about abortions and um, and women's rights. Listen, this baby was six months. This baby leaped for joy. That tells us, guess what? There's life begins in the womb. Yeah. Ooh, I know that's not popular. I know that makes some people unhappy, but guess what? That's Bible, because the Bible says at six months, and, and, and Mary was only one month pregnant. Ooh, did y'all just get that? Yeah. 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 At six months, John recognized the Messiah who was just one month mm -hmm. in Mary's womb. Ah. <laughs> Did y'all get that? Yeah. <laughs> so yes, sir. we live in a world that that tries to uh, tries to establish their own own definition of when life, life begins. begins. Yeah. And I believe life begins at conception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me keep going now, cause y'all said I'm meddling. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> keep, keep meddling. <laughs> All right. Now we're told in verse forty-two. Then she spoke out with a loud voice. That's Elizabeth. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this grant to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Wow. Elizabeth, listen to this. Uh, uh, where are all the men in the room? Elizabeth, uh, Jackie Arkadine, Elizabeth prophesied and said, the mother of my Lord. Yeah. Uh-huh. She she Sounds prophesied crazy. right then yeah. and there. Yeah. Yeah. She recognized that that child in Mary was one month old, Savior. and that was to be the that was her Lord. Yeah, isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So and she even said, "For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. <laughs> Blessed is she who believed." For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Wow. She prophesied. Boy, y'all going to get me happy now. Come on. So now, so now we have Mary gets happy and she starts singing a song, Shirley. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Uh, he has regarded the lowly state of uh, his maidservant. Behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Now, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is prophesying. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name and his mercy on those who fear him. For generation to generation he has shown strength with his arm. He has scabbed the proud and the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their throne. He has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has <laughs> helped his servant Israel and remembers of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Boy, she's praising God right then and there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Y'all see that worship? She's worshiping God right then and there. Yes. And it says, Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Okay? So she stayed with her, uh, her, her family member for three months. Now, Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord has shown great mercy to her, they rejoice with her. Now, as I was teaching today at noon, when a male child is born, according to the Jewish law, on the eighth day, they were to take him to be circumcised in the temple. Okay, So it says, 
Uh, so it was on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zachariah. They were going to name him after his dad. Okay. His mother answered and said, no, mm -hmm. he shall be called John. Mm -hmm. Now, how did she know that he was going to be called John? Because the angel told so Zachariah, well, I remember I told you he couldn't speak, right? Right. right. But he could write. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he could write. <laughs> okay. <That's good. laughs> he could put down on paper, where's my dinner? Well, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know. He could put down on paper, you feel like making love tonight? I mean, he could put down, so guess what he wrote? He wrote down as she got pregnant, he is going to be named John. Mm -hmm. Right. So the angel told me that was to be his name. Okay. So that's how she knew. So so verse 61 says, yeah, and they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by that name. So they made signs to his father what he would have him call. They asked the question, since he couldn't speak, he said, what do you want to name him? And verse 53 says, and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, said, his name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was open mm -hmm. and his tongue loose and he spoke. Now guess what he did when he spoke for the first time? Praise, Praise God. God. Praise and God. Ooh. And just like the angel had told him, what God said that was going to happen, happened. So you should praise God for what? God keeps his word. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Praise God. God keeps his word. Praise God. It's never too late. Praise God because all things are possible with God. There's okay. reason to praise God. Okay? Everybody got that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, so guess what he did? Start with verse 67. Now the father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit. The baby John was filled with the Spirit. Uh, Mary was conceived by the Spirit. Elizabeth prophesied by the Spirit. Now Zacharias is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now his father prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, who mm -hmm. he has visited and redeemed his people, has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began. Now guess what he's saying? That from the very beginning, God has had prophets, mm -hmm. men who spoke the word of God, okay? So he says here, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy and promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. That's the mm -hmm. Old Testament. To grant us to he, that, that we being delivered from the hand of the enemies might serve him without fear mm -hmm. in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I'm going to stop there. Mm -hmm. God wants us to serve him with reverence all mm -hmm. the days of our life. Mm -hmm. Don't y'all remember those soap operas? Yeah. Back in the 60s life. and 70s. <laughs> my, my grandmother and mother used to watch those things all the time. Yeah. One time I heard them carrying on a conversation. I thought they were talking about somebody <laughs> real <laughs> <laughs> They were talking about the soap operas. Yeah. But I remember, I remember a lot of the soap opera's names. I can still remember. Yeah, I can remember. Uh, uh, I can remember the guiding light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World turns. Yeah, and the edge of night. The night. Yeah. Oh my children. My yeah. Everybody remember that. Mm -hmm. And the guiding light. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and the church is a general hospital. All yeah. right, well, I'm getting Ooh. young and the restless. Y'all must have watched some of that too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> God wants us to serve Him 
all the days of our life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it says here in verse 76, why? Well, I'm amazed that I got this far. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. He's talking about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. You, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. The highest is capitalized in your Bible, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whenever you see the word uh, angel capitalized or Lord capitalized uh, or him capitalized, that's a referring to God. Okay, that's a mm -hmm. reference to God. That lets you know it's referring to God. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, mm -hmm. to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins mm -hmm. through the tender mercies of our God, which with which the day spring from on high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into a way of peace. So the Bible says that child John grew mm -hmm. and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his manifestation of Israel. Do you know John the Baptist lived in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. The Bible says John ate locusts and honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and John preached a message. His message was, repent, for the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, heaven is at hand. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the Bible, and listen to this. He was in the wilderness, and he preached. And guess what happened when you preach God's word? People will leave the city to come to wherever the word is being preached. Amen. Amen. If, we, if we preach and proclaim the word, people will come. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, uh, uh, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And so our, our responsibility as a church is to point men to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's our first responsibility. So what, here's what I'm going to tell you. Write this on your calendar. Mark it down, Barbara. Mark <laughs> it down, Shirley. And Vicky and and I, uh, Vicky, I know it's only a month before you're wedding, but mark it down, okay? Mark it down, mark it down. So, uh, Jesse, mark it down. Here's what I want to tell you. June the 4th, which is on a Saturday, at 10 a.m., we're going to have another evangelism training class. Okay? okay? It's going to be one hour. Mm-hmm. It's going to be here in person. Okay. We want you to come. Okay? We've already had one. We want to have another. Why are we doing that? Because we don't want to give you any excuse for not sharing your faith. And we want to help you uh, learn the scriptures, learn how to witness to people, and to make it easy and transitional where you can have a conversation and you learn how to take that conversation and and, and, and and, and roll it into a conversation about Jesus. You know, a lot of times I'll ask people, you know, are you a Christian? Uh, do you have a church home? Uh, what are your beliefs about Jesus? You know, so you can enter into a conversation and you can do it in a natural way. So June the 4th at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the commitment we made this year is that we're going to ramp it up. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to ramp all this year, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go a little higher. Okay, the women had a conference. It was the best conference I I believe they've had since I've been at, at been at uh, at Ben Washington. I had somebody tell me uh, yesterday who's not a member of Ben Washington, but they mm -hmm. ran into me. They said, "Boy, did we boy we enjoyed that conference that y'all had." I had <laughs> two people tell me that. Two Man. women tell me that. Amen. And they're not members of Ben White. They said, boy, we really enjoyed that conference. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so there are things that we're, and I've had people tell me how much they enjoyed the uh, the preachers preaching during Passion Week on those three days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, we're trying to do things to, uh, to lift up the name of Jesus. So we're going to have that, we're going to have that training on, on uh, June the 4th. Uh, we hope to bring in another training 
uh, a, a little bit different than the first two. Why? Because we want to help you to be able to share your faith. Now, mm -hmm. I also want y'all to join us in prayer as we begin to pray and ask God to do some miracles. Uh, uh, I'm believing God that we're going to get uh, a refrigerated trailer. Amen. 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 And I'm believing that yeah. I'm believing that we're going to be able to to continue to feed the people. So let me ask this question. Now the lesson is over. Someone ask this question. <laughs> So there are people there are people who are saying why are you so why are you fixated on black and red fish with shrimp and rice why are you fixated on feeding the people okay i've had people pose that question well let me ask you this what what did jesus say about the poor he said the, he said the poor you're going to always have with you Okay, mm -hmm. so guess what? There are always going to be poor people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you take that group of people that are identified as poor, and y'all need to know this, because I taught this in, in my new Bible class, Joseph and Mary were classified as poor. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because when they went to the temple to circumcise Jesus, they, they didn't bring a lamb. Uh -huh. They brought what they could afford. They brought turtle doves, uh -huh. which means they didn't have deep pockets. So Jesus, the Bible said, he became poor that we might become rich. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. uh, so, so the poor you're always going to have with you. So I'm going to ask this question. If you take a group of people that are poor, isn't it true that there are going to be some, some people that are poor who are also not only going to be poor, but they're going to be hungry at times? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna struggle to put food on the table. All right. And 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 what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 25? He said, When I was hungry, so I have the belief that uh you should have a food pantry ministry uh, as long as you have a church. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm a, I, Amen. I got I got three amens. Okay, I only Amen. got three. Amen <laughs> to the three or four people. Amen. Amen. As long as you have poor people, mm -hmm. and the Bible said you always gonna have them. Mm -hmm. And right. Jesus said, "When I was hungry, you fed me." He wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the people. People. Right. Amen. So Jesus was saying, "As you do it to the people." You've done it to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So somebody asked me, well, uh, are y'all really committed to, to doing this for the long term? And I said, yeah, why not? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we always going to have people that are hungry. Yeah. Even when the that's pandemic right. is over, guess yeah. what? You're still going to have people that going to get yeah. hungry. Yeah. They were hungry before the pandemic. Before the pandemic. Wow. Yeah. Right. It's inflation now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really gonna be hungry. So, <laughs> so, what is wrong with us having a food pantry ministry? Not a thing. Not thing. And and then some people say, well, you know, some people question about uh, feeding our members at at noontime. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't apologize for that one either. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you why, because the <laughs> Bible says. And and I and I tried to highlight this a little bit, but the Bible says in First Timothy that you are to take care of the widows. Yeah. And you are to take care yeah. of those that you know uh, uh, who 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 don't have anybody to take care of them. Mm -hmm. well, guess yeah. what? Right. I believe I take that literal. Mm -hmm. I take that literal. Well, guess what? I think it's biblical for us to, to take care of our, our own as well as we take care of those that are not members of Ben Washington. Amen. And, Amen. And, and Amen. We don't discriminate when we give our food. We don't discriminate. They're black, they're white, they're Hispanic, they're old, they're young. We don't discriminate. Amen. Uh, so, uh, as a matter of fact, this coming Friday, we're going to pick up an extra extra uh, um Truck food or food for the next two weeks. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna restock our pantry this Friday and next Saturday. 
uh, on the, I think it was 15th, I think it is, uh, 18th. We're going to actually, uh, we're going to uh, have a food distribution on the third Saturday in, 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 uh, in May, third Saturday in June. Okay, so I want to thank you all for the Bible study. Now, do y'all have any questions? Rosalind Walker, if you're online, you got any questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. You got right, Ross. No. Rosalind, Rosalind, you got to have a question. Now, I can't get, I can't let you leave here without a question. <laughs> y'all know I love Rosalind Walker. Yeah, yeah. Amen. we love Rosalind. We love her too. I, yes, we, we love her. her. Yeah. That was a good lesson, Pastor. I have a question. Okay. Uh-oh. Do you think that the pandemic is over? Mm -mm. Do I think it's over? Yes, sir. No. I don't think it's Ooh. over. I think I think it's 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 moving toward that direction. Mm -hmm. I think you still need to be uh, cautious. I think mm -hmm. I, I think you I think you should not let your guards down. Right. Amen. Okay. Yeah. But do I think it's over? No, I don't think it's over. But I do believe we're we're seeing signs that uh, we're approaching that stage. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to get my second booster shot real soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had two shots. I've had one booster shot, and I'm getting my second booster shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do what I can to stay healthy. Amen. Okay. Amen. And, and so I still encourage people do what you do what you need to do to stay healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Amen. 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 So Amen. I don't think it's over, but I think it's moving that direction. Okay. Okay. All right. Any any other questions? Very good lesson, Pastor. Okay. Now, don't forget what y'all was supposed to do between the first evangelism training. And the second training, you were to invite some people to come to Ben Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the question, but don't raise your hand. Have you invited somebody to come to Ben Washington? Don't 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 raise your hand. Don't shout out loud. Just if you haven't done it, when are you gonna do it? Because you got between now Amen. and June. Amen. Okay, so use Amen. the month of May to encourage somebody. Uh, to come to Ben Washington, and I got a. There is a great preacher preaching on on uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. mm. My wife asked my wife, "Who is that?" You looking at him? You yeah, I know you're saying that gonna be you. <laughs> that gonna be you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know what she said. What? She said, he all right, he all right, he all right, he all right, okay, all right. Well, let's close in prayer. Uh, Father God, thank you for allowing us to come and study your word tonight. Uh, we, Lord, we just look forward to studying the, the rest of the book, uh, the Gospel of Luke. We pray, oh God, that we will have a clear understanding of what took place as Jesus was ushered into the world. He came, Father, at the right time. Yeah. Yes. He came at the appointed time. He came at the way in the way, Lord, that you wanted him to come. So Lord, mm -hmm. we pray that you will bless us as we as we go through this gospel. May we be may our faith grow. Yes. May we be, may we become stronger disciples. Mm -hmm. May we uh May we be able, Father, to have a glow about us because we are walking with you. And may we be able to go and take the gospel both near and far yeah. to let the world know that Jesus Christ is the promised Savior. In Jesus' name, bless all who mm -hmm. are online tonight. We pray, oh God, that you will bless us to be able to share our faith and, and invite somebody to church, Lord. Yes, Lord. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Amen. And by the way, I actually invited somebody to church tonight before I even got online. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually doing what I'm asking you to do. I text somebody and say, hey, we would love to have you come to Ben Watson Baptist Church. 
Amen. And I'm actually talking to other people today about coming to be and watching Baptist Church. Why? Because there are good things happening when, when God's people get together. Amen. 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 Now, don't forget, yes, do what, time is, what time is church on Sunday? 10 o'clock. What time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And what time is Sunday school? 8.45. Okay, 8.45 is Sunday school. And, and and we have church service at 10. And you need to know that we're gonna have we're gonna have one service the whole month of May Amen. and at least the first Sunday in June. Amen. Amen. So we we just want to kind of see how it feels to have one service. Yeah. yeah. And I enjoyed one service on last Amen. Sunday. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed too. I enjoyed too. Yeah. Good too. Yeah. Pastor, yeah. Pastor, yeah. Uh -huh. I have a question. What's the question? How many times should you ask a person to come to church? There's no time. How many times? I don't think there's a a, a, lim a, a a limit on how many times you ask them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if I ask somebody every week, then it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, as you ask him, you can also pray. Mm -hmm. well, I've been praying. I've been praying. Yeah, yeah praying. just pray God I've to move their hearts. I have mm -hmm. a good friend. I have a good friend of mine. His wife used to go to church. And he never went to church, mm -hmm. and she never harassed him about going to church. And 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 as she was going to church, he would just you know go read the paper and and drink his coffee. And 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 one day, he said to him, "I'm gonna go to church with you." After mm -hmm. months of doing this. And and guess what? He got saved. He got Amen. baptized. Amen. He became a deacon in the church. Amen. His Amen. wife, his Amen. wife, his Don't wife play. had oh, the right thing. spirit. You know, Amen. Sometimes, Amen. sometimes you just yes. sometimes you can stop asking and just right. keep pray. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. And yeah. I think right. that's what I was trying to ask because I yeah. keep asking. I mean, I've been I've been doing it for a couple of years now, and I've been praying for him too. But I just I just want to keep just asking him. <laughs> now, what you can do, Gwen, if he doesn't have a relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. go, to that, go to that evangelism class. Well, he does have a relationship with God. That's the problem. And he just got, he's one of those people that was in church and got, just, you know, discouraged. And Okay. He, you know, he experienced what's called church hurt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, and he needs to snap out of it. He does. He does. Okay. He needs to snap out of it. I agree. Okay. I just want to make sure because he tells okay. me I need to stop asking. <laughs> well, be nice. Just keep praying for him. Okay. 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 All right. Well, Anybody I'll else? Pray for him. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, y'all be blessed. Have a great week. We'll see y'all on Sunday. Lord, say the same. Good night. 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 Bye bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. 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 Good night, Pastor. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Great. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.